everyone and welcome to this special dead horse podcast the end of the year horse dead award podcast the horse is alive uh, yeah uh, and since like since all of us know that dead horse is founded on the principle of doing what everyone else is doing it only 6 months late <laughs> so, so that's why we are doing our own end of the year list this time and uh, year late. yeah before we start yeah with me are tejas Hey, Vivek. Hey, and Rashi. Hey. Yep. And okay, so do we just straight dive into because we have a lot of categories categories this time yeah, around. Yeah, it's gonna be a long, it's gonna be a long podcast. I mean, does anyone want to say anything about 2014 and the year as it was in video games first? It was disappointing because a lot of, you know, yeah. a lot of games got delayed for the next. Which are three? Is is what you're thinking of? Yes, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Yeah, in general, yeah, I think all of us think that like 2015 and, and evolve <laughs> and uh, Dragon Age not coming out was shitty. Oh yes. Uh, Wait, I thought Dragon Age did come out. Uh, not for India. Oh not right, for India, right? It oh, got yeah. cancelled, right? Uh, yeah, I forgot. Yeah, so 2014 sucked. Now, and we are hoping 2015 is better. Well, I mean, it did suck. Yeah. There were a lot of good games, as we're about to see. But yeah, it's just that a lot of games that we've been looking forward to for a long time. By CD Projekt Red, right? did not come out this year. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right, all right. Let's 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 get to let's get to talking about it. Okay. So without much further ado, let's start with the categories. Our first category is the Kuch Kuch Hota Hai Award for Best Emotions in a Video Game. <laughs> And uh, this award, uh, all of us decided to nominate games which touched us emotionally that were released this year. uh yes so okay the nominees are uh blackwell epiphany uh transistor walking dead season 2 the wolf among us and lifeless planet mm-hmm. so okay let's start with transistor since rashi and vivek uh, have chosen this as their best emotional game year award i've chosen it mainly because of the ending i same here that, that ending was a big gut punch for me Uh, yeah, I was. I was not super. I was not super invested in the story up till that ending, and uh, like it's and like I a could, punch to us. Yeah, it's a super punch to the to the gut, and it really takes you in. Like there are moments in Transistor which are phenomenal. Uh, like any moment that involves a music or a song is great in that uh, in that game. Like when you the first time you go into the club and you hear you hear Red's voice as she's singing is pretty great. Uh, Like I mean, there are there are good moments in that game, but I think the best moment is the end. So yeah, I mean, can we spoil games now? Uh, nah, no, I mean, I, I still I, haven't played Transistor, so that's your fault. Uh, but that's your fault. there's no, I mean, there's no way we can make a really good case for why it deserves this award without yes. telling you what happens at that ending. Oh, well, that sucks because I do intend to play it. Yeah, I know. Like, no, it's. Yeah, since we are doing the democracy route and two of us haven't played it, so now you can't spoil it. Okay, But Vivek, how about this? Vivek, roll the d20. If it's uh, if you beat a DC of thirteen, you win this argument. Nah, if 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 you guys spoil Transistor, I'll spoil all the other games on this list. Go ahead. So. <laughs> I'm fine Go with ahead. that. I don't I'm care. I'm fine with that. Uh, we we have to be able to spoil games here because we're talk we're going to be talking about games that we played all year. If there's if we cannot spoil them. Mm. I mean, if it was like some other game, then it's fine. But like, I, I do want to play Transistor. So, <laughs> but like, like you had you so many, so many hours and days to do that. Why did you not do it then? Huh? <laughs> we've been telling you, we've been telling you to play the game for such a long time. Exactly. Well, This... I've established a precedent of not playing games you tell me to. So I've got that. Well, You you will you deserve it. to know the ending. <laughs> you, you know, they they just will eventually play Transistor. They said he's going to play it like, I think, sometime in the middle of next year. Yeah, about. Yeah, same for me actually. Because I think I told him for Rage for around about Rage for around six months <laughs> before he finally picked it up, played it, and liked it. Yeah, true that. <laughs> I. I I I like uh, you've told me about uh, Mark of the Ninja for ages and I've only just well not only just but I played it about 2 months ago. So, yeah. you know, there's that. I haven't finished it. 
Uh, I'm on the last level, so... It's a great... Mark of the Ninja is a great game. But anyway, yeah. Transistor. We yeah. should just be... Just like, to... as an aside, like, should we just start over? Because, like, we should have decided the spoiler rule before. So if no, you... it's fine. No, I'm it's right. fine. It's fine. That's, that's okay. cool. We should, we should be able to discuss these things on the... Right. This It's fine. I think we should be able to spoil games. I think we shouldn't, but... <laughs> I do because like, we're talking about the story. like there's no way that we can choose the award for best story without telling each other why this game has the best story. Yeah, but like in, you can do that without spoiler. No, you... I mean it, it, if you're giving it an award, you need to justify why you're giving it that award. You need to be like in that stuff. You need like to be if... able to no, you need to be able to talk about the story Arvin. and for best like emotion, SL... for best emotions, it's tied to like huh. tied specifically to that end moment. At least for me and Rashi, I think it is right. Yep. It's tied to a really, really amazing... Yeah, just okay, right? We know that it's going to end the end. That's it. But that's... Yes, thank you. Let's go home. Next category. Who's the winner then? How do you decide the winner without... Yes. Popular vote. Since you both are like holding a gun to my head, or the spoiler gun, then you guys win. Terrorists win this time. That's silly. Uh... <laughs> yeah, no, seriously, no spoilers. Uh, yeah. All right, all right. We'll get to fine. We'll get for to... this game. We'll make a rule. Fine. Yeah. What games don't we want spoiled? Uh, on this list, basically just transistor. Otherwise, yeah. I don't care. Wolf like, Among on... Us. Okay, yeah. yeah cool. Wolf Rashi doesn't want Wolf Among Us spoiled. Spoiled. You don't want transistor spoiled. Me, I can de- dis- describe Wolf Among Us without spoiling it. Yeah, like, I can too, and I don't mind even if it does get spoiled. For me, that's a game about the journey, not necessarily the destination. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't think the mystery is the great part about that game. Uh, I think the world is the great part about that game. Uh, anyway. Okay. So- nee, seriously, we will start again because I think with this we can like thoda jada. No, no, it's fine. It's, it's fine. fine. Okay. Huh? It's okay. Let's okay. So for, for first, we we want to whittle down every list to just three instead of five. So do konse kartne ye list mein se pehle wo decide karo. I guess hmm. Wolf Among Us and Lifeless Planet. I think. Nee, I would I would cut Walking Dead season two instead. Walking because Dead season two. one was better, based on what I've played. So. And I think Lifeless Planet needs to go. Hmm. Okay, I I Just, want like uh, this to go like basically Wolf Among Us and Walking Dead season two. No, Wolf Among Us, the first two episodes that I played have been phenomenal. Like Wolf Walking Dead season two, Lifeless Planet. Is that okay with everyone? Fine, yeah. yeah. Wolf or, Among Us. Uh, or emotions? Nahi. story wise, it's good. Like in ऐसे कोई emotional moment कहाँ था उसमें? ठीक है, मैंने I'm not finished it, so I won't fight you. Wolf Among Us निकाल दे, Lifeless Planet निकाल दे. ठीक है, चलो ये दोनों निकाल दो. Because Walking Dead season two, Rashi has finished, and hmm. according to her, it's worth. Huh. It. Yeah, it yeah. is. Okay. Wolf Among Us, I have not finished, but the first two episodes are awesome. Okay, hmm. fine. Uh, so Blackwell Epiphany, Transistor, and Walking Dead season two. So hmm. what should win this? I think Transistor deserves to win hmm. because I haven't put my case forward for Epiphany yet. Mm-hmm. Fine, fine. Put your case <laughs> forward for Epiphany. Yeah. Okay. So, if if any, uh, you guys know about the Blackwell series of adventure games, right? Oh, so, not, you you really love the series, and you keep telling us about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's my favorite adventure game series. And oh, does he? Uh, I usually just kind of tune out when he starts talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. So I mean, and and what we you have in Blackwell if if any is a protagonist which, uh, over like people have spent. a lot of time with like 2 3 years roughly and uh, the ending in that is very heart wrenching and at the same time it's also very hopeful uh, like particularly like where rosa and joy end up which i won't spoil but but yeah I'm, like i'm i'm fine with you spoiling it if if you think it will it will sway me to say all right let's give this award to blackwell epiphany spoil it i don't mind yeah okay. I'm, it's not like i'm going to be playing that one either okay Okay, Rashi, so in that case, what happens is, uh, um, Rashi, are you okay with for getting? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. Fine. Okay, so in Blackwell, if any, what happens is, uh, Rosa and Joey uh, are on the hunt for somebody who can uh, basically devour spirits. So you know, instead of 
uh, you guys know how the spirits go to their yeah yeah they, uh, heaven, right? takes them to a place where they can move on yeah 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 a place in her head roughly so yeah, yeah. but in this case what happens is like somebody is devour, devouring spirits so okay. they don't do, so they just like they like uh, scream in pain and just like vanish okay so so over the course of the game uh, rosa and joey uh, go to a lot of places and uh, the best part about this is that uh, uh, towards the end what happens is rosa uh, herself gets thrown into the limbo uh, which with joey ended up in in the previous one okay. and there she meets her aunt uh, and her aunt has sort of given up on life it's a, but then rosa convinces her aunt to uh, to help her escape and then when rosa gets out it turns out that she uh, because of her ordeal has got a lot of uh, like her powers have been enhanced oh uh, and the the spirit that is causing this she confronts the spirit and uh, succeeds in banishing it but as a result uh, uh, like she she has to die basically so but what she does is because of her power she basically uh, uh, frees all the spirits that have been devoured yeah she yeah she frees all the spirits in the world that that are all the spooks that are currently trapped here oh, okay and she lets them but want. yeah but uh, but like joey still cannot cannot leave for some reason so she brings joey back to life so rosa dies joey becomes a person and the game ends with joey remembering rosa and like telling her telling us her story basically so that um, was like yeah okay. that is a good ending it does not beat how awesome the moment in transistor is not think- at all I, huh? I honestly I don't even know if that's a good ending though I think it could be the delivery. No, it's a, it's a really great ending to that series. Like I can understand why Arvind loves that ending. Uh, okay. Yeah, like because the like you have to play it to realize yeah, the yeah. inherent rules of the universe, you I, know. I played oh, okay. the first two I played the first two Blackwell games and uh, that, that is a that feels like an earned ending to that universe. It's a very earnest series of games, you know. It doesn't oh, okay. it doesn't try to it's very sincere. That's what I like about it. It doesn't uh, try to be snarky or anything like that. It's just sincere. I mean, the characters joke a lot in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But but, but like stories, otherwise, yeah. yeah. Hmm. No, that's uh, fair. And yeah, I feel like that ending is earned. But tran- the the ending of Transistor is like a massive gut punch. Okay, and you know what? That's is... it. I'm gonna check Steam and see if Transistor is available. The hell, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Rashi, do you agree? Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, Transistor's ending was out of the world. Oh yeah. wait, it's already in my library. What the hell? Yes, I, I think. <laughs> wow, Tejas. <laughs> I do wow. have a lot of games you don't know that you have. <laughs> I don't remember buying this. Maybe someone gifted. That's possible. Yeah. Yeah, maybe when Rosa was freeing the ghosts, this ended up in your library. <laughs> Uh, uh, I'm, that's it. I'm downloading it tonight after this podcast. Uh, it's a one sitting game. At least for me, it was. I finished it in one go. Oh really? How long did it take you? It's around oh. seven to eight hours. Eight hours. Oh, maybe geez, maybe lesser sitting, if you don't really you know do if you just yeah. It can take around four to five if you if you do none of the collectible stuff. Okay. It no. Has, it has it has a very interesting combat system. Okay, well, you know me. I'm like, going to be doing all the side missions too, so... I, I, I mean, uh, Tejas is going to buy it, so now I really don't want to spoil it because that ending is amazing, but, like... Yeah, no, I'll also buy it, okay? Yeah, fine. No, dude, I, I, apparently I've already bought it. I just need to play it now. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, like, okay. I really so, want to tell you... I really yeah. want to tell you why the, the ending is amazing because it feels cheap otherwise to win this, you know? Uh, but, no, it's but fine. You, yeah, I'm. I'm completely fine with cheap You, you because... guys can like, you know, just go. <laughs> no, have we can a drop walk off the it. call for a while, and you know, just. <laughs> no, no. Okay, so the winner in this category is Transistor. Now let's move on to our okay. next so, award. Transistor, is... Blackwell Epiphany, and Walking Dead season two, right? Yeah. And yeah, these are our top three. These are our top. Basically. Yeah. Okay. I, I think we can revisit the whole transistor thing uh, on yeah, a once, day once, once we finish later. it. Up. Yeah. Give yeah, me a week or so and I'll try and finish it up. Sure. Mm-hmm. All right. So the next award. Yeah, this next award is a special one. It's <laughs> called the Chetan Bhagat Award for Worst Writing. <laughs> and yeah, we have a special uh, like category of games in this. 
Yeah, uh, this has been a particularly good year for this award. If I might. Yeah. Say. Oh God. <laughs> yeah, like yes. there were several deserving candidates that are not in this top five list. Yes, but because so, it was getting too crowded. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so first game in this category is Remember Me. Now this probably released a while ago, but I think it only showed up on PC recently or something. I don't know. But I played it this year. <laughs> then there's uh, then there's Shadow of Mordor, which yeah, which you probably like if you w- listen to us regularly, we talked a lot about. Then there's Thief Four, which yeah, which uh, <laughs> <laughs> which earned. Uh, when it came, just when it came out, it got a lot of flack for how it handled its, its characters and especially Garrett. Yeah, uh, among other things that I mean, yeah, there's a list <laughs> of bad things in Thor for endless. Yeah, and then there's Watch Dogs, which I haven't played, but I've heard a lot of um, like things about. Mostly <laughs> from me. <laughs> yeah. Aiden Pierce. Yeah. Pierce. Yeah, Aiden Pierce. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that Italian and Aiden Pierce, we should have had a category specifically. Oh, man, that should have been a, that would have been an amazing category. Like the yeah. <laughs> I, I asked this question once in the, in the previous podcast, you know. I think so. Hmm. Ki Aiden yeah. Pierce and Italian music on <laughs> Yeah, we morning. did have this discussion. I, I would I would love a game in which like you know it you find out that Aiden Pierce and Italian are like brothers that Kunke Mele mein bichad gaya. No, no, no. They are basically Italian. Is his uh, what do you call? Who jo Assassin's Creed mein hota na? Uska oh my god! Yeah, ancestor, yeah. <laughs> He's ancestor. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah. And then he okay, has and... to. <laughs> oh god! Yeah. He has to you know go through uh, uh, to go into the animus and then find out who he really is and he's Italian. Oh my god! <laughs> then at the end of the first Shadow of Mo- second Shadow of Mordor game, uh, Celebrimbor turns towards the. Like computer screen and is talking to us, but we are not. No, no, no. It is Pierce. At that point, he kind of uh, looks a little, a bit more like uh, El uh, Elron, and wears a, a pair of shades and says, "Mr. Anderson." <laughs> yeah. So it seems that Watch Dogs has already taken the lead, but we should introduce the last candidate oh, first, which is. Nice, but definitely not the Splinter least. Cell. Yeah, Splinter oh, Cell Blacklist. Yeah. This, this game <laughs> has the worst. This game is like is is the game which had some of the best moments in terms of like gameplay for me this year, but just mm. the story is so absurdly bad. It's filled with moments of like, like there are literally dialogues or uh, dialogues like, uh, you know your problem, Sam. You care too much, <laughs> 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 which is exactly what I think you'd hear in the in the uh, like op center of an anti-terrorist unit. So the, that's what that's how the leaders of an anti-terrorist unit talk to each other. You know your problem. You care too much. Fisher, you know what your what's your problem? The team always comes first for you. <laughs> yeah. So this is a really tough category because all of these games, if you you can make a really solid case on them, <laughs> like Remember Me, for example. So this is a game which has a really beautiful world, and that's where the good stuff ends. Well, uh, I don't know. Like, remember me? I don't think deserves to be here because I think the climax of that game saves it to a certain extent. And I don't know because, like, all everything good you say about it is immediately nullified when you realize that these people call themselves terrorists. <laughs> yeah, and that alone, like that alone. Okay, will... okay, but but that ending is a pretty good ending when she when she like manipulates her father's memories. and you find out yeah. exactly what has happened in her past that's like it, it takes a very long time to get to the interesting part but when it does i i like i don't feel this game deserves to be in the it's not up it's not at the same level with shadow of mordor and thief four and watch dogs it's not wo caliber ka nahi hai yeah we don't give any put it that way maybe but like all of the story like i i played with this too and Like I just couldn't get myself to take this game seriously based on like how you know like uh, everyone looked like they were like you know some teenagers version of cool like dressed like they're in a fashion show and like they have such absurd names yeah, like like I mean it it definitely it's very very French it is very very French but it still I mean it still is not absurdly bad you know what I mean. Yeah, like, like I guess. Or, okay, in maybe in another year, at, at a level of like being yeah. absurdly bad. 
Yeah, I mean, okay, in the, in a in an in another year it could have probably uh, like won, but in this case, yeah, I mean, even I sort of have to agree that Shadow of Mordor's story is more like, I mean, the characters in Shadow of Mordor are more bland, and Thief is just like painful on many levels, and Watch Dogs is like you know torture. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I think you'll call that enhanced dialogue based on Splinter Cell. <laughs> So to take this back a bit, I, I like how there's an actual description now. The game is very French. Um, I, I just <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Remember me. Okay. I'll uh, seed this category. We should. Yeah. Remember me does not deserve to be on this list. Okay. So what else are we cutting after remember me? I, I guess uh-huh. Shadow Mordor could go. I mean, writing wise, so thick. Tha. Only they just. Nah, I, I don't know like because shadow of, if you look at the writing like it's super generic nothing is interesting because you can even do a generic story well I mean I'd argue that uh you could actually cut thief from this because thief even like most of the th- most of thief's problems aren't the dialogue they're like everything else a good thief game with that dialogue could still have been like salvageable Like not like could have been great. The no the tragedy of so, this thief game, according to me, is that it comes so close to being good so many times. You know, that is the tragedy of this. Like that bank. Yeah. Card, like that you is, feel like you feel like there are good ideas, but the team didn't have enough confidence in them. So every and every turn they uh, like handicap themselves or like yeah, second I, guess I, themselves. Like for whatever handicaps. it's worth, I did enjoy myself playing this game quite a few times, but then I think. It's almost like after a certain, after maybe like one hour of enjoying yourself, there's half an hour of like shit you have to eat. <laughs> yeah, like, I think they just divided it up like that. We can't keep you happy <laughs> continuously. One hour of fun, come on, 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 Is Shadow of Mordor better than it, or is Sha- is it worse than Shadow, worse. or is it better than Shadow of Mordor? I think it's on a purely writing level. I think Thief might edge it over Shadow of Mordor because Shadow if you look at the material Shadow of Mordor has to work with, I mean Thief one, two, three weren't exactly like literary classics, right? But, they But were, Shadow they were, of Mordor, on they the were, other hand, has like I'm playing Thief three and it has a fairly engaging. World and this fairly engaging world dialogue going on. No, yeah, there is like no. I love Thief's world definitely, but at the same time, like we can easily say that it's not uh, like you know rich at the level of Lord of the Rings. So it's not System Shock 2. It's not uh, like it's not that that particular kind of Ken Levine writing that really hooks me. I guess you can say. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'd say definitely like Shadow of Mordor is worse than Thief. In right in the writing department, we have ragged on Shadow of Mordor a lot. Yeah, uh, but like, yeah, but but then again, it's a good game. So like, you know, like, I mean, here's how I look at it. Okay, like, if Thief's writing is good, it doesn't save this game. Like, it doesn't. Thief is still bad. But if Shadow of Mordor's writing is good, it becomes like the top games of this like. It can easily over the few the, the course of this generation become the best game to come out. So I think in, that's why Shadow of Mordor deserves to be in this category because we uh, like have a very like tough love in this podcast thing. All right, all right, fine. <laughs> Let's take Thief out. Yeah. Okay. So in the remaining three, what wins? I think Splinter Cell Blacklist wins this. For me, like Watch Dogs, no contest. Because Splinter, 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 Splinter Cell Black for me as well. Splinter Cell Black Blacklist. Uh, the whole game, you're hunting this terrorist mastermind, and at the end, when you catch him, uh, he spouts utter nonsense like, "I have, I I have ten nations behind me, and they're all willing to spend all the money in the world to destroy the United States and bring America to its knees." Nah, why did he say eleven? Because then he would have said, "Gyara mulko ki police mere piche." <laughs> And then oh, wow. this game's writing would have become the best suddenly. Like, Gyara Mulko ki police. Oh, I didn't. I didn't even make that connection. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I think yeah because Splinter Cell Blacklist gave rise to that. That that means Watch Dogs has to win it. 
<laughs> no, because no, look, I, like I think my justification like, for Watch Dogs is the ending. Because you know how it, it goes into the Adrian Pierce superhero origin story thing. That's yeah, what yeah. I hate about it. Like, his niece, his niece gets killed, and it's a revenge drama, right? Yeah. No, and not even that. Like towards the end, like, like everything's so I, bland in it. The only. time it is actually fun like i said before was when he gets you know beaten up by that other guy what's <laughs> yeah it's cool? like that uh, you know that time where uh, there was in kabhi alvida kana when sharukh khan gets a slap the whole theater starts clapping because they are so bored of the movie <laughs> it's like that wow <laughs> yeah that was a big cultural touchstone like it was all on the news that this movie is so boring that people clapped when they put the hero got slapped when does he get slapped in oh, kabhi alvida na kena you know when like preeti zinta finds out about the affair spoiler warning by the way like oh yeah 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 <laughs> yeah she slaps him right like that's the best scene in the movie like sharukh khan yeah. sharukh's been slapped before in films yeah <laughs> yeah but this is the big one this is being yeah. slapped for something that he did wrong so probably yes yeah <laughs> yeah he made so, yeah, in my, i can't believe Ar- arvind has actually seen kabhi alvida na kehna in a theater hmm. yeah let's just say i was forced to against my will aha uh-huh, sure and leave it at that <laughs> all right okay, okay. So, so yeah i think watch dogs because of the fact that uh, like even splinter cell like splinter cell has more self awareness than watch dogs because watch dogs had zero Like watch dogs. There's nothing fun to do in it. I mean, there's nothing that involves you. That okay, you and you need to do this, and you're like really interested. Except the first time that you're playing the game, that's when it's kind of interesting. But usme bhi it kind of falls short. You're like, okay, isse main ye kar sakta hu, main wo kar sakta hu. Nothing happens really. As such. Yeah, so I'd probably like watch dogs yeah. without that. I mean, if that ending would have not been there, the superhero origin story, then I would have said okay, blacklist because of the. Like whole, you know, America for Kia narrative. But Watch Dogs, like, yeah, no contest because Adrian Pierce does worse things than his en- than his enemies, and then he, in the end, it's like, oh, I'm the Dark Knight, I'm the Watchful Protector, <laughs> blah blah blah. Vivek, one second, I am I am getting the final cut scene of Splinter Cell Blacklist so that you guys can watch it. Oh no! Nah, nah, no, that that that's not like because I then see like, how, we can't see, see that. That's how like, bad it is. No, but like the people watching this, we the nation can't see this cutscene. Like, how will you show this to the nation? We can link it in the video. The nation. <laughs> <laughs> we need to know that the nation needs to know. Did you guys get the link I sent? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, now I need to uh, uh, ending Watch Dogs. You also need to you Google the Watch Dogs cutscene because <laughs> yeah, yeah. What have we done? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go mute and watch this. Oh, oh yeah, dude, I forgot about that too. Uh, dude, I forgot about is... that as well. Uh, watch Dogs ending also is actually like a a teaser for a sequel, so it's that on top of all this stuff. Can you send me the link again? Okay, um, this is seven minutes worth of video. Just saying, that's way too long. Uh, don't watch all seven minutes. You can watch uh the Yeah, you watch it from the second minute onward. You'll be there at the end. Uh, second minute. Yeah, I mean, I haven't uh like, I haven't had the time to like look up this proper ending. But uh, the IGN one seems to be kind of comprehensive. I don't know. I haven't seen the IGN thing, but yeah. And then there is the errand signal video on it, which. So yeah, like I think Watch Dogs like has to run away with it because yeah, okay. Blacklist like it's kind of it's ultimately it's the same. Blacklist is not kind of uh, trying to be like a you know superhero origin story. It knows that Sam Fisher is kind of like a douchebag. But Sam no, no, Fisher but... is not a sack of potatoes, is he? <laughs> there are twelve. Yeah. There are twelve yeah. nations that stand with the engineers behind me. Twelve nations. Bara mulkon ki police iske saath hai. Yeah, yeah, no, but that actually kind of makes it like a like a B movie thing, which makes but me less it, inclined to. Just watch it from the second second minute onwards for the next two three minutes. That's all you need to watch to see how bad it is. 
I've seen this errand signal video, so yeah, okay, I know this. Yeah, but but yeah, no, I'm I'm still gonna go with this. Same here. Have you watch dogs? Okay. Yeah, no, I'm watching it. I'm watching this. Like Sam Same Fisher here. is. Yeah, maybe. Like I love this. Like I actually love this part where you know the camera it does a one eight Michael Bay one eight three sixty <laughs> turn and Sam Fisher is saying shit. Like <laughs> that's actually quite funny. Like you know, so bad it's good kind of it. I I think. Blacklist deserves this award, but whatever, I'm fine. Like, if you guys, if you guys think Watch Dogs is worse, then Watch Dogs is worse. I've not played it, so I don't know. Yeah. Uh, okay, so Watch Dogs is a worthy winner of the Chetan Bhagat Award. Yeah. Okay, wait, we <laughs> were guys, wait, we weren't watching those videos because I was watching and I just got press X to exercise Fifth Amendment. Yes, I. Yes. Yes. Or Fifth Freedom, rather. I was like, yes. what? At what? least it doesn't say press F to pay respects. It's just as stupid, if not more. <laughs> it's just as stupid. It's just yeah, as it is pretty stupid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exercise fifth freedom, and then he drops his knife. <laughs> yeah, but but Watch Dogs is one now, so yeah, no no backsies. <laughs> Oh, so while I was Look listening to this video, you guys made yeah. a decision. They yeah. just now no 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 no. They just is now on my side. Just, do you think yeah, this... no backsies? Watch Dogs is one. Dude, Dude so I wasn't even yeah. part of the Watch Dogs discussion. I was you. You guys said we're watching the videos, so I went to watch the videos. I agree. They just was watching the video. What? Like that's that's like cheating. Like after we made such a good case of Watch Dogs. Dude, I asked you guys. Hey, I'm gonna mute while I watch this. Is that cool? And you guys were yes. So I muted it. Watch... Now that's a valid thing. <laughs> That's okay, that. okay. Yeah, but then you have to watch this Watch Dogs ending too. <laughs> okay, then hold on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes. Oh god, this is gonna. I hope it's not that long. Let me give Aaron's... you the cutscene. I think Arvind has sent you an errant signal video, right? No, Which... the first one is the IGN thing, right? Which okay. explains the ending. Uh, the IGN link. Let me check that because the other the YouTube link is like freaking 15 minutes. I'm not watching that. Yeah, no, no, not that one. The other uh, there's the ign.com/wiki/. Yeah, uh, it's opening very slowly for some reason. I mean, YouTube was buffering at freaking HD graphics, but somehow IGN cannot load. This doesn't even make sense. But okay, um, till it loads. <laughs> Yeah. This this is the ending on YouTube, just the video, okay. and I tell you where the cutscene starts. It's probably going to be some gameplay and some cutscene. I hope okay. it's not a thirty minute cutscene. That's Hideo Kojima level of indulgence. Yeah. So where do I watch it from? Oh no no it does, it ends like halfway through so that's cool so I'm just gonna hit play. It it starts like at nine in nineteen seconds itself, like the whole dead set sec thing, like. Oh God, I remember this part. So freaking boring. Kita dheere chalta hai aar ye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this part was like fun at first, and then it got really frustrating. Hmm. <laughs> okay. He's pointing a gun at someone now. Arvin. Yeah. ये वो वाला पार्ट है जिसमें बुड्ढे को मारता है या नो आई एम एक्चुअली वाचिंग लाइक द स्प्लिंटर सेल थिंग्स राइट एट द एंड ओके 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 आई हैव टू से दैट दिस गाय डजंट लुक लाइक सैम फिशर लाइक ही लुक्स लाइक सम जेनेरिक लाइक बस कर गया है रिबूट कर दिया ही डजंट लुक लाइक द सेम कैरेक्टर मॉडल सेम नहीं है पहले वाला हां ओके जानबूझ के थोड़ा यंग कर दिया पहले से हां काफी यंग कर दिया एक्चुअली आर यू फकिंग किडिंग मी दैट एंडिंग दैट एंडिंग इज स्टूपिड Uh, watch dogs standing is really fucking stupid but nothing it's not on the level of exercise fit freedom i'm sorry <laughs> nah i Arvind, have to say i love to go with watch dogs arvin to to dekh na fifth freedom wala i've i've seen that like like it's like first he says i'll spill every secret i know and then like you get there's all like that guy is the like has the best like he does the batman voice there's always another war vision like, <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty like stupid, the... but like Watch Dogs still kind of wins for me. Tejas, are you there? He's still watching Watch Dogs. Tejas, he's probably muted. Yeah, just a second, guys. 
Guessing Tejas is still watching Watch Dogs ending. I it's think he fell asleep watching the Watch Dogs ending. <laughs> 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 He's watching, but it's a very long cut scene. Holy shit, he's Batman. <laughs> yes, he is Batman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he literally did the thing, you know, where, uh, what do you call? Uh, they, do the, they do the very, what is it, Christopher Nolan's city panning shot, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, even the music, like if you saw the music like in the opening kind of thing, it was like ta-da, ta-da, has the same Batman, Christopher Nolan kind of beats. Like yeah, they, yeah. Can, they come very close to like as much as they can without plagar- plagiarizing. So Tejas, what is worse? Uh, I'd have to say Splinter Cell. So, two okay, of so us it's are a tie, sp- like 2-2. Two, two. two of us are Splinter Cell, two of us are Watch Dogs. Who, who are well, like... Because Watch Dogs um, is let's bad, just do but it's not like... Just thing. <laughs> Watch Dogs isn't so bad where you're like, you know, I, I can't possibly, you know... <laughs> we can give it jointly, like, because both developers worth, uh, like, rec- like, deserve, like, recognition for what they've done here. So... The only reason I'd consider, consider not giving it to Splinter Cell is because Splinter Cell is... Uh, Blacklist is actually a good game and I had fun playing it. Watch Dogs. Did did you have fun playing Watch Dogs, Rashi? No. <laughs> okay. Not at all. <laughs> you know what? Let's just give it to Splinter Cell because I guess writing part may it is kind of boring. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'd probably give it to both. Like joint. Yeah. Like yeah. We have three people now who are Splinter Cell. That's not three. That was like Rashi was trying to like negotiate. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and can... and if if I've if I've learned one thing from Splinter Cell is that you don't negotiate with terrorists. Uh, no, 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 Arvind, you need to exercise your fifth freedom. <laughs> that that is making you say these awfully corny lines proves that Splinter Cell is the worst written game of the year. Yeah. Um, I still want to give it to both. Though. I want to give it to Splinter Cell, man. Blacklist, just exercise. I want to exercise the fifth freedom. And give it to Splinter Cell Blacklist. Yeah, okay, fine. <laughs> yeah. But then, like, you're doing this for everything. You just, like... like, And then everyone else eventually has to be the reasonable person. No, no, I won't do it for everything. I just wanted to do it, wanted to do it for this. Because fifth freedom. I just, like, I, I can't keep exercising the fifth freedom. Then it's not the fifth freedom. But, okay, so how predictable is Splinter Cell Blacklist story? Very, very, very predictable. It is about the Americans finding a terrorist cell embedded in all the intelligence agencies in the world and the wonder engineers. of all the terrorists are Muslim. Really? Yes. They like specify the religion for these. Yep. All the names. The names are all Jamal and Abdul and uh, like it is, it is the most bland, predictable thing. You could ever imagine the president's life is in danger at one point. At one point, uh, they they're like, oh, the attack must be going on in New York, and then like at the last minute, they like they find out it's a false flag and it's actually going on somewhere else. Wow. It's, it's all the usual garbage that happens in these plots. There's never anything interesting. It's never even remotely connected to. Like they use at, at NDU, they, they do the, they do the current event game thing of like they mention Benghazi in the beginning, and you know, shit, there's it's always shit like that. You know, the current event stuff always comes up. So there's a mission set in Kargil, uh, where you kill Fidayin. Of course, <laughs> it's <laughs> absurd, silly nonsense. It it feels that it, like it sounds at least like you know someone had a very cursory you know wiki search of global events and is like okay yes. let's add this in yeah it it is it is exactly that it's like someone read the cliff notes of foreign policy magazine and decided to write a game based on that I I would love to see a magazine called foreign policy magazine there is a magazine called foreign policy magazine oh shit. 
Ya. Hot damn, could be. <laughs> and this is why I do not make games with political commentary, because I know nothing. <laughs> Okay, so Splinter Cell Blacklist manages to like stage a last-minute fifth freedom thingy and <laughs> wow. like win this. You, win you're just this not category. gonna let it go. You you can't accept that you lost on this. Yeah, like I'm going to be passive aggressive for the next fifty hours. Okay, ten okay. minutes. Ten minutes. Be passive aggressive for the next ten minutes. Yeah, you okay. you've got a deadline. So the next you. award, which. Uh, is the Samosa Mealu Award for Best Gameplay. The five nominees are Shadow of Mordor, Dungeon of Endless, Metal Gear Riding Revengeance, One Finger Death Punch, and Divinity Original Sin. So, okay, so we have a couple of Dungeon of the Endless supporters here, Vivek and Tejas, so you guys tell us about the game. Okay, uh, what's the name of the award, award again? Samosa Mealu. Oh, wow. So, best, like, this is for gameplay, right? Yep. Yeah, best gameplay, yeah. Okay, Vivek, you go first, I'll follow up. You go first. Uh, okay, so um, I've... Uh, Dungeons of the Endless is the first game I've played in a long time that's actually made me, you know, pay attention to what I'm doing and actually just enjoy the fact that I'm, you know, the mechanics at, at, at its core. If uh, a quick run-up for anybody who may not know, it is a roguelike uh, mixed with uh, a tower defense. tower defense, yeah, a tower defense game, uh, and it is the most absurd pairing ever. Like I, I you would never uh, have expected it, it to work. It is the but, most interesting pairing of those two elements that I have exactly. ever seen. I yes, it's it's elegant, it's simple, it's and just so so crisp. You go into a mission. And the moment you figure out exactly how this works, which isn't long, you're just like sitting there smiling, going, "Oh hell!" Yeah. And that's I, it's been a long time since I've, that's happened in a game. So it is addictive with just how much, like, just the amount of variety that goes into the kind of strategies that you have to end up planning because of the procedural level generation. Uh, yeah. Not only will your route to the end exit change every time, your strategy will change every time because of the kind of map that's been generated. Like if if the map is too long, instead of uh, having uh, uh, like a, a metal generator or a like a like the thing that generates money so that you can keep buying stuff, you might want to generate health because getting to the exit will be a slog, and you'll need the health to keep regening health for your guys. Also you know? leveling them up, you know. Yes. Also leveling them up, uh, and the like. The other thing is you gotta decide. And the the thing I loved about it is that like you know initially I didn't think there was a story, but as you keep going down the levels, the characters yeah. talking to each other, and there's a plot that slowly gets revealed, and it is actually really really interesting. That's like the beauty of it is that there's so much to discover, like in it's little bits and pieces. It's sparse. Yeah, it doesn't hit you over the head with anything. Like even though that that dialogue they have is like two lines after you finish a level. Like it doesn't feel co- like you know the exposition yeah. or anything. It's just there. Uh, so literally, like after I played Shadow of Mordor, I did not think I would play a game this year that felt next gen. But after Sh- like and Shadow of Mordor is the only big budget AAA game that feels like it is next generation on this list in this whole year. Forget this list. But Dungeon of the Endless is fresh. Like there's, there is nothing about it that feels stale. Everything feels new. It feels like the Amplitude Studios guys really looked at the roguelike and looked at the state of the roguelikes we've seen recently, and they decided to build something amazing. Like taking those elements, taking the roguelike elements, and the tower defense elements, they made like a game nobody expected to play. I didn't. I didn't see. I've never had an idea like this. I've never like remotely even conceptualized a game like this. Usually, when I'm playing roguelikes, like you know, I can, I can see that like you know, I have had I've had a similar idea like this before. But Dungeon of the Endless is just it's out of left field and it's brilliant. Yeah, the, it, everything about it just makes you want to kind of just talk about it. I have showed it to literally everybody I've talked to, uh, you know, uh, at work. Uh, 
elsewhere just be like you should see this game uh even like you know like and graphics is the last thing i'd ever talk about but even there like it does things that are just it so my new exactly much you know what blew my mind is when you walk into a room and this is like pixel graphics and you have the the shadows the pixel shadows actually scale and change according to the lighting and i was yes, like yes. wow and that that like that is those about little it. things you know they thought about yes it is those little things that make the game something entirely Special different yeah yeah so yeah that's what that is why that like you know we could probably go on uh, for a yeah, while yeah we, we can keep going on so like we'll stop now yeah i think this is a good <laughs> yeah good good place to stop <laughs> okay uh rashi which game did you nominate um metal gear rising revengeance okay yeah it's a lot of fun uh you know i mean what you basically have to just run around slash people into bits and you know it's basically fruit ninja without the fruits but with humans <laughs> and i think that's that it's just really satisfying to you know like slice people into thin pieces <laughs> yeah yeah like platinum yeah like it's probably uh like and, it's a really well executed game yeah and the best part is like especially towards the beginning of the game you know like you just press a button and then he he jumps over rockets to reach this huge as meta <laughs> metal gear thingy and yeah. basically <laughs> slice it into pieces that's like pretty awesome yeah like it's, 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 is a lot of fun it is a lot yes. of fun yes and i yeah. mean you can you can you can go button mash or you can actually you know for people who are into this thing uh, may you know learn combos and yeah. have a lot of fun with that yeah and yeah, i, I actually... do agree and i do agree that you know uh, blocking and and parrying is like very important in the game but it's hard to master and i yeah and i had had a very bad time with learning that thing and it was tough but and frustrating yet it was just yeah. it, it was just too much fun my my only my only contention with metal gear revengeance is like my only problem with the game is and, and this has nothing to do with this category the only problem i've had with this game was the final boss fight that's it but other than that it's a phenomenal game yep it's really really right good right down to the music to yeah. to you know i mean the music just makes you want to like you know just yeah the music is work really... your fingers you know like <laughs> I played through this game. Mm-hmm. I played this played through this game with uh, Raiden wearing a sombrero and a poncho. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I I love this. That like this game just has this uh, this scene where you have uh, you uh, like through a robot that is twice your like, not even twice like hundred times your size. Uh, like you basically suplex the robot while this game is playing a t- tune that says "Rules of Nature." <laughs> like, that's that's amazing. Like. and and then when you you know when you like uh, when it prompts and you hit the right uh, combinations mm. he basically uh, punches the the human humanoid or the robot or whatever and then takes out its spine and i mean that's that's pretty cool you know yeah. it's a lot of fun to do that and not miss your you not miss your chance to do it I think yep. in terms of game gameplay, it's it's really cool. You have to make a lot of strategies, and uh, yeah, I would say yep. that's that's my point for MGR. Yeah, yeah, MGR is pretty good too. Uh, what a game! The game I nominated was uh, One Finger Death Punch, which is a rhythm martial arts kind of a game, and really the only way to experience it is to actually play it. So. like i know i've only told you guys to play it like 500 times but but i don't know if like the video i linked uh, does it justice but uh, what, essentially what you are is you are jackie chan or bruce lee from uh, like a martial arts movie and you have uh, these waves of people coming towards you and at the same time you can use a bunch of weapons you have your abilities but just like the the act of like uh punching people and it, it it does all this with just two buttons that's what the most uh, like lo- great thing about this is and like it's it's the most satisfying game to play that i've ever played without a, a shadow of a doubt uh 
like all like everything about this game is incredibly low budget like the graphics the sound like even the the japanese voice is very like b movie ish but but this game just absolutely delivers in the gameplay like it has no right to be as fun to play as it is but no and right. yet like yeah and like this is a game which has about uh probably a thousand levels i have done like about 700 of them after that like it just becomes too tough okay there's there's three difficulty levels and then there is an endless mode which i have like uh my record for that is roughly like 1200 enemies beaten so so yeah this one finger death punch like any day in terms of gameplay would be my like best game uh this video looks like a lot of fun uh, i got to say that yeah i mean you are like you like when you're playing this and when the enemies are like the, what the video i linked you is like the basic gameplay like it's not when it gets very fast you feel like a combination of jackie chan and mozart if that makes any sense jackie chan <laughs> and mozart yeah you are constant like it's you eventually you stop looking at the screen you feel where the enemy is coming and you press that button because you don't have time to see and process this game gets you in that rhythm where all that matters is like the rhythm and like that's what's great about it it makes you feel like you're a martial artist you're an actual like even though all you're doing is just pressing left click and right click okay does it mouse. ever have everybody was kung fu fighting playing in the background <laughs> <laughs> yeah no it, the ending is a bit special but but yeah, like it's the ending is one of the mode but you but yeah no, not that because of copyright but but yeah you can easily like play your own music while you're doing it and i, I actually do, did that once like although like uh this game actually has like the great music it has the all the like very sim you know like those all those special tunes from martial arts movies but a bit knock off so they don't have to pay licensing fees which actually adds to the charm because does <laughs> it, it have uh, cheesy dialogues uh but it it, it has uh, it has your uh, like a sensei kind of guy like saying something like like uh like w- what's it saying like don't button mash keep your head and focus So he says, like, keep your head and focus. Like, that's what he does. <laughs> which, which, like, I, it, it's quite, it's quite a funny. But <laughs> I'm sure it is, Arvind. This, yeah. yeah, this video looks like a shitload of fun, man. Yeah, this game, yeah, like one thing, like, and yeah, like, and and I mean, I'm a guy who loved Metal Gear Revengeance, but even that, like, this game, like, I seriously cannot find a way to improve the, this game. <laughs> because it's just perfect so so yeah this is my uh all right uh, nomination. so should should we first let's cut shadow of mordor and divinity original sin yeah or because we... while uh, yeah like because these games didn't live and die on their gameplay i guess these games had like roughly yeah the shadow of mordor kind of like had Sh- other shadow of mordor does live and die on its gameplay but i would say dungeon of the endless i'm more passionate about so i'm okay mm-hmm. with cutting Way more passionate about. <laughs> uh, Arvind, are you okay? Like, is everyone okay with? Yeah, cutting? yeah, yeah I'm yeah, okay yeah, with yeah. Shadow of Mordor and Divinity Original Sin. Okay, so uh, of what's left, what wins? Because all three of these games are amazing. Uh, I've not played One Finger Death Punch, but that yeah, I'm gonna you know, say One Finger Death Punch because there is nothing like moment to moment that is better than this game. Like. When you talk about gameplay, you're not like okay, yeah, like in five minutes I'll execute this. Like, eh, even like some levels actually do last five minutes, but like moment to moment, nothing beats One Finger Death Punch. Maybe not. Like there is a moment to moment level because you're always exploring rooms in Dungeons of the Endless, and you might always walk into a room that is just a horrible, horrible trap that you have to run away from. So there is that moment to moment tension in Dungeons of the Endless, but the amazing part of Dungeons of the Endless is when you find the exit. and you have to spend oh, yeah. the next 5 minutes building your route to the exit and once you click the button to pick up the crystal oh it's on it it's is fucking on, on. <laughs> and, and that is that is when you hope and pray that all your plans yeah. have succeeded and yeah and, and i don't think you can like knock a game just cuz it's like a slower sort of action does not make it less uh you know gameplay or less entertaining than something that's you know But no, yeah, I definitely agree with that. Like, I'm a big strategy game player too, so like I know. But, but like, what I what I find great about this game, like One Finger Death Punch, is that I can, 
click on any single level like any of the 700 levels and know that i'll have fun 700 like, and levels. yeah and like it has lots of gameplay modes like there is a retro film mode which is black and white so you don't have the color colors trying to help you there so the game becomes harder even though it's the same then there's weapons only modes where you have like you can only use certain weapons and then there's boss fights which are like instead of like this crowd of enemies you just have one and one really really tough enemy and like yeah that the boss modes are pretty intense too so so and like what i find it great is that re- reliably like over 700 levels like even metal gear rising has its like low parts like the elevator and that kind of thing but this game just consistently like but that's i mean i don't know that is that is 5 minutes in a like four and a half hour triple a game that is, like that's not even 5 minutes the elevator is maybe no yeah but like obviously like it's also less uh, but but at the same time you have to like agree that this is pretty impressive getting all 700 levels like you know their concept is just so strong it is uh, i don't know like for me this is between uh, the two games which i have played which is dungeons of the endless and and metal gear revengeance uh I haven't played uh I haven't played the uh, one finger death punch so yeah, I don't know but the, the other two it has to win like I I like, it has to win <laughs> yeah I just compromise in them like I'm not compromising in this category like, yeah. because you've compromised everywhere else yeah like this is like I'm backed into a corner here so one finger death punch has to win like yeah, yeah. I don't... Yeah, I mean, you can buy it, right? It's like two dollars. Like you can, yeah, like. Oh, no, that... because the the price makes a difference, Arvind. No, I'm just saying because, like, if I tell you to buy it right now and play, you'll say, "Oh no, I don't have the money," etc., etc. No, I'm not gonna buy it, irrespective. <laughs> yeah, no, one yeah. finger death punch has to win. Like, it no, has... I don't. Just no, because it has to win. Okay, yeah. so there is, like, you're it's three against one at this point, yes. man. I know like I just because care. like definitive in one finger death like, punch no. like three enemies are pretty easy so it doesn't matter like no i'm sorry it's three against one yes. so i don't know it's either revenge or the of the endless uh, it's revenge but yeah thank you three versus one yeah <laughs> it's one finger death punch has to win sorry <laughs> i will vote for revenge just to spite you but i will not vote for dungeon of the endless <laughs> yeah <laughs> no one finger death punch has to win no 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 it doesn't look like something i could play for hours on end i like the video looks interesting but it looks very yeah i can play this for a bit it's kind of entertaining and then nah you because you haven't played it yet like that's the thing like you you yeah but i can say the same thing about uh, you know you and uh, yeah exactly. but then i say it can say the same thing about dungeon of the endless yeah i'll play it for one level but then i don't think how so yeah that's it yeah. without playing i can say anything so uh impasse cuz i'm not budging on dungeons yeah I'm i can't budge on that yeah. no because vivek didn't budge earlier that's why i'm not budging like if, if vivek would have gone will, for watch dogs i, I will budge on best story Yeah, no it doesn't matter the future doesn't matter the past is what matters yeah, yeah. one finger death punch has to win like all revengeance but only if vivek loses yeah oh, okay so are right. you willing to compromise and let revengeance win tejas no not really you uh, cut shit off it's cathartic but not that's not like you know anything that it's not, no, that that is that is why it's interesting it is interesting because of the the level of insanity that is happening and still able like the level of insanity that happens on screen while yeah. still being able to maintain a level of coherency in revengeance is yeah. amazing yeah and yeah. the boss fights are with the exception of the last one are really They're really well designed awesome. Yeah. I but I the last one was kind of good. I mean like I, it was annoying the the first one when like you know you have to No, the last to... phase is very very annoying when he keeps throwing shit at you. I'm sorry that's that's <laughs> Oh, uh, no, actually yeah, I found it annoying too but once I figured out the trick then I then it became enjoyable. Yeah. Because then like I just I was like smashing that guy's like douchebag face. Especially like I'm with Tejas here. I think Dungeons of the Dungeons of the Endless has nah. is is the best gameplay of this year but No, it doesn't matter now like Dungeon of the Endless will not win. Either Revengeance or One Finger Death Punch. Oh, yeah. Such a dick. 
<laughs> Revenge. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you've seen nothing yet. Like, uh, no, dude. See, we're we're not gonna yield to terrorist demands here. <laughs> yeah. so... So, so the only way to end this is if Vivek compromises and votes for revengeance, because then I will also vote for revengeance. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, Vivek! I yeah. can't betray Dungeons at the end. This is so good. Yeah. Can what do you have? Rules of nature. <laughs> Let's, yeah, rules of nature. Yeah. Let's move on to the next award and come back to this. <laughs> no, no, that can't we happen. We have to decide this now that we're now that yeah. we're here. Uh, Rock paper scissors. Revengeance. Okay, revengeance wins. Fuck it. Fine. Metal Gear Revengeance can win. <laughs> like we can keep doing this. Moving <laughs> um, on. Yeah, let's move on. on. Okay. Yeah, the Katrina Kaif Award for worst Indian accent. Nominees are Far Cry 4, Dreamfall Chapters, Valiant Hearts. Yes. What did they just say? It's definitely yeah. not Dreamfall Chapters. It's not Dreamfall Chapters. You haven't seen the the Indian character in it though, like have you? Yeah, so I'm I'm pretty much fine. Like I saw the Dreamfall Chapters thing and I thought that was pretty horrible. But I don't have a dog in this race, so I'm fine with whatever you guys want. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine with whatever you guys want. Yeah. Uh, neither of us have played Dreamfall Chapters. How bad is Far Cry 4's Indian accent? It's it's like uh, you know an Angres, you know an NRI coming over and just talking in Hindi. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, and we can agree that NRIs are just the worst. So so Far Cry 4 has. I mean, come on, who says (laughs) Behin (laughs) Chon? I actually read it from a script. Well, yeah. Probably that guy, and also the fact that there's a dialogue in this game that says "Oh, Bencho Eagle." Uh, yeah. <laughs> let's say Far Cry Four. I'm going to flay you alive. <laughs> oh yeah, like that, that's also like the thing. Like they just say the curse words in Hindi. The yeah. rest is English. The rest is English, of so. course. I'm fine. Yeah. I'm fine with Far Cry Four winning this. Uh, yeah, fine. Okay, Far Cry Four has in like ghosts to victory here. The worst Indian accent award. We should <laughs> explain the awards before we do them. Like it's self-explanatory. But yeah, I mean, that's pretty self. Okay, now the next category is Gazab Kahani Award for Best Story, which is obviously like for the best story. And the nominees we have here are Wasteland 2, Wolf Among Us, Consortium, Banner Saga, and Blackwell Epiphany. So, yeah. Uh, surprisingly, we don't have like... Uh, Rashi, have you voted for anything yeah. or no? Uh, no, because I haven't really played Wolf Among Us. I just played okay. like a bit of the first episode. So okay. we should cut Consortium and Wolf Among Us from this list. Arvinda, yeah. you might, do you want Wasteland yeah. 2 on this list? Nah, I don't have, feel particularly like... Because I feel particularly strongly about Consortium. Uh, but I don't know that it deserves to be on this list because it's a buggy game, even though the plot is good. Uh, no, in that case, like keep it. Like, keep it then, now. Yeah. I, I probably like I don't I don't like Banner Saga in this because like Banner Saga was forgettable like for me so like, Banner Saga apart from that I'm looking for best story so I don't oh, oh oh wait that's not Banner Saga five oh nope. right it's Banner Saga with a V <laughs> oh <laughs> right yeah uh, Wolf Among Us is and does anyone have a problem if we take it out uh, uh, guess no. not though I mean though I thought it was better than like Banner Saga but hey whatever. Oh God! Take Wasteland Two out first. <laughs> Wasteland Two out first. No, but I I played Banner Saga all of all. Like and I like yeah. Like I I literally can't remember. But like okay yeah you liked it fine. Yeah. I love uh, how he's just no, like don't delete session, Wasteland. you fine. Underline underline. We can take out consortium. Uh. No, you don't delete stuff. Underline it. What are you doing? Okay. Yes, I'm actually yeah like whatever you guys think. Sure. For, for five minutes, whatever you guys think, and then the next award, you're going to be a dick again for the next 20 minutes, aren't you? <laughs> well, I did say the future doesn't matter before. Uh, so. I feel strongly about Banner Saga, but I uh, know, I mean, like, Blackwell Epiphany is the end of a series, so, and Banner Saga is the beginning of one, so. Oh, you yeah, we've uh, already talked yeah, about the uh, sequel, right? Yeah, uh, a satisfying ending is much harder to do than, like, uh, yeah, sure. an intriguing beginning. Sure. Yeah. Though, like, at this stage, I'm surprised you haven't said Wolf Among Us because if you've only played the first two episodes, you should be like, oh the my first god. Two episodes. That's why I don't yeah. want to say anything. Yeah, because just based on the first two, you, like, everyone should be like, oh my god, Wolf Among Us, best story. I love the but first yeah. two episodes. <laughs> yeah. 
but no one else has played it. You played so, it. You don't like the game. No, no, I mean, like it's still. I still like it, but I think it's sort of uh, like the quality lags after the the strong. It's not at, it's not at Walking Dead level of consistency. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. I mean, Blackwell if any can win. Okay. Okay. Now the next category is uh, the Frame Rogue Award for Best Rogue Like. Uh, this one is actually a a bit of a weird category in that we included older games too, just because like yep. they are some of the like most beloved games, and because the, since it's, this is our awards, so we can make the rules. Yep. Uh, the the nominees are Rogue Legacy, Dungeon of the Endless, XCOM Long War, Spelunky, FTL. Yeah. Uh, I think it's pretty obvious from my end. Yeah, same here. Okay. That, do you like Dungeon of the Endless more than FTL? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Since I've seen you play FTL a lot, that that's pretty high praise. Yeah, okay, Dungeon of the Endless. Yeah. Now you know why I've been so, uh, you know. Mm. No, but then like that's why I was willing to argue so much for One Finger Death Punch. Ah. So, uh, yeah. So whatever. Okay, what are we cutting from this list? What is what is not going to be there in the top? I'd say since like Dungeon of the Endless is going to win, let's just cut the two games that were before, like. Uh, Spelunky, Spelunky and FTL, yeah. yeah, because they were like not released this year. They were from yeah, way back. Yeah, I'm fine with that. And does anyone have a problem with cutting Spelunky and FTL? No, not nope. Yep. Biggest uh, now disappointment. Yeah, this is the Tumse Na Ho Paega Award for biggest disappointment. And yeah, this is a pretty big category too. Uh, yes. And you, you actually we are seeing a lot of repeat repeats here. It's Thief. Uh, Watch Dogs, Assassin's Creed Unity, Master Chief Collection, and always sometimes monsters. Okay, I man, Watch Dogs yeah, wins this. Yeah, hands Watch Dogs has. I I'm yeah, not listening to anything yeah. else. Watch Dogs has been this because yeah, Watch Dogs yeah, like like it's kind of yeah. It's, it's had a disappointment or, in every department. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. yeah, yeah, yeah. Keith had. Thief had potential because I was initially excited about Thief because it was being made by the Idis Montreal guys and in that sense it is a big disappointment but mm-hmm. it's still not as bad as Watch Dogs and like just the scale of stupidity is not that <laughs> <laughs> yeah no I definitely agree yeah. and that was Watch Dogs was one game that everybody had had expectations from and wow they were just you know it was pretty much the downhill. Face. Yeah, or like or it was after that E3 video, especially. Yeah, it was like downhill from that video. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and then the, it and, and the the last uh, the last uh, yeah mission, you know, in which this helicopter starts chasing you. It's like, what the hell? Are we taking Master Chief Collection off this list or Assassin's Creed? Yeah, yeah I think Master Chief. No, that, this Master is actually Chief the, the tougher choice. Yeah, Master Chief. Yeah, like I mean, most of the games were functional. <laughs> and, uh, Unity. Yeah. Unity is. Crap, uh, yeah. Yeah, but <laughs> I had no expectations from it, so no disappointments. Mm. Okay, Watch Dogs wins biggest disappointment. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Next like, no, the harder choice in this was actually what to take off rather than what to win. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now let's move on to Shakuni Mama Award for best strategy game. This mm. is between Endless Space, Crusader Kings 2. Civ Beyond Earth, Door Kickers, and XCOM Long War. Okay, what are we oh. cutting first from this? Uh, uh, endless Space and Beyond Earth, since nobody has like vouched for them pretty much. I I think uh, yeah, I'm gonna watch. Beyond Earth has to go. This. According to me. Yeah, Beyond Earth has to go. Yeah. Okay. So what's it the next? Has to go. <laughs> <laughs> because like overwhelmingly all none of you. Neither you nor Arvind were impressed with it, from what I remember when we were talking. Yeah. About it, right? No, I, I think it's good, but it needs more. Yeah. Okay. And, and endless space, space, even though it's good, it like technically came out last year. So, okay. Yeah. So now it's the, okay. Crusader Kings 2. Tejas, have you played that? No, I haven't. But I have a friend who keeps telling me about it, so I'm gonna back it up, just because I know how it plays. Okay. I know hmm. how it plays too. I've played it. It's really, really good. Yeah, I've played it too. Yeah. Uh, It's an amazing game, according to me. Yeah, uh, though, like the interface, like is like it yes. takes a lot of time getting used. It does, to. Yeah, but the, that's the true. strategy in it that is involved is just brilliant. Yeah, uh, like the the layers. I mean, like mm-hmm. we keep saying whenever we look at Shadow of Mordor that that is what we want. Uh, mm-hmm. 
we, that is what like we want Crusader Kings two in Shadow of Mordor. That level of manipulation with their nemesis system would be insane. Uh, yeah, it's an amazing game. I'll, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, it's a pretty good game. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Door Kickers was since we're talking about what I'm behind. Door Kickers is like I don't know. I talked about it last week. The but the thing that really surprised me was that it does the SWAT four thing. It does the like you feel like you're commanding a SWAT team, and the fact that you can like just draw out all your plans and watch your like soldiers move across uh, and move into a house or like a, a villa or now like the latest level I'm playing is a parking lot and just see how your plan works out again and again and just, every time you fail and you, you get like you figure out why you fail. You know it's a hard game but it's fair. Yeah, you know, you know exactly why you failed when you failed, and what mistake it is that you're making. It's never obtuse, as in you haven't learned what's going on. Uh, it's it's always interesting when uh, you think that you're out of the enemy's line of sight, but you realize exactly why you're in the enemy's line of sight. That like you have to take in mm. so many things into yeah, consideration yeah. before moving. It's just it's phenomenal. It, in terms of yeah, in this case, it's yeah actually kind of. Uh, like similar to Frozen Synapse in a way. Yeah, it is. It is very similar to Frozen Synapse, except I think Frozen Synapse is turn-based completely, right? Uh, no, it's not exact. Like it's it's like three seconds play out in real time. No, one second, and then it's turn-based, and then one second again in real time. So it's like it's both actually. It's like real time turn-based. Okay. Uh, Long War. You've raved a lot about. Yeah, Long War actually like it's a it's the only mod in any of these categories. Yeah. But what it does is it takes XCOM Enemy Unknown, which is a great game by itself, and it improves it uh, like many fold. It's like uh, instead of the four classes in XCOM, you get eight classes. You get um, a wider variety of aliens, and the campaign uh, throws up a bit big twists. Like there are the tech tree is in, insane. Like it becomes this giant web which you cannot actually like research all of in one game so and uh, like the the eight classes in the strategy gameplay they complement each other very well like there's the scout which can which whose job is basically to race, race ahead and to uh, like kind of like scout the scene like try to get other aliens into vulnerable vulnerable positions and then you have uh, the heavy, which is like uh, now, actually, I think, uh, yeah, what it does is instead of the heavy, it divides it into one class, which is demolitions, which has the rocket launcher, and then there's the gunner class, which has the Gatling gun. But the the both these classes are like the gunner class is the least mobile, and yeah, what it uh, yeah, so it 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 does have a lot of uh, depth to it. It also has new maps and stuff, so that's also good. But yeah, Long War is pretty great. I recommend like anyone who like l liked Enemy Unknown to just like download it and play it. I, yeah, I don't know. I tried it. I found it too hard. Like, hmm. yeah, that's a bit like yeah. The initial game at least like takes a lot of like yeah. because uh, essentially like the, the the spoiler is kind of in the name right there, Long War. But it's not supposed <laughs> to be over quickly. Yeah, so, sure. I, I agree that it, it does mm. add a lot of depth to an already amazing game. Mm. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, what uh, what wins this? I don't know. All of us are behind our particular games. Uh, my in order of preference is Long War, then Crusader Kings 2, then, like, because I haven't played Door Kickers. So. I'm fine I haven't played any of the games, but I found Door Kickers to be pretty interesting. Mm. Uh, I'm fine with it going to Crusader Kings too. Uh, yeah, okay, Crusader like that Kings. Deser too. That deserves yeah. it. Uh, I think so too. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. with Crusader. Okay, Crusader Kings two it is. Door kickers, I think, like uh, in Arvid's case, he's played Frozen Synapse, so. It yeah, uh, but yeah, I do think that like oh, like Frozen Synapse didn't like uh, grab me in the same way as Crusader Kings two, so. Because Crus Crusader Kings 2 is like Game oh, yeah. of Thrones simulator. Yeah, so. it is. It is basically Game of Thrones simulator. And it <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the next uh, category is killing me Ubisoftly for the best open world uh, collectathon upgrade menu game, which is in short for best Ubisoft game. 
The nominees are Far Cry 4, Assassin's Creed Unity, Assassin's Creed Rogue, Watch Dogs, and Shadow of Mordor. <laughs> so, uh, we should explain what this award is beforehand. Yes. Uh, yeah. What's so, happening in the open world genre these days? Yeah. So, like, like I said earlier, like, it's the it's the award for the best collectathon open world upgrade tree, five different types of mission game, which is. Yeah which has sort of become a template which Ubisoft applies to each and every one of its games. Especially the yeah. fact that like, these open world games have become more and more bloated recently as time has gone on because people think that yeah. uh, adding repetitive content is the same as making a more engaging game, which is not yeah. always true. Yeah, I think part of that is because a lot of times, you know, people are like, well, a game with 180 hours of gameplay is obviously better than a game with 90 hours. So... And it's obviously better than a game with only eight hours of gameplay. So as a result, like because uh, so so companies have kind of started the route of uh, like stretching out the same kind of stories that they had before into these huge like collectathons, which like like have these random tangents. So you yeah. just meet some guy in an open world who will give you four quests for no absolute reason. Then you just go to some other guy. And, all of that was just for nothing. And it's it's not even that that you get quests from random people. It is that these quests are monotonous and repetitive. That's the yeah. part. Like the the thing <laughs> you're talking about used to happen mm-hmm. in Red Dead Redemption as well. As you when you're riding through the world, mm-hmm. you find someone, something happened, yeah. like an ambient event. But those events were always interesting. It's always someone's getting robbed. That yeah. you can go and prevent the robbery in real time. And that is there's at least you feel like the world is alive. Then in this case, mm-hmm. it's just uh, collect twenty things and then yeah. Collect and I mean, of those things that you collected 20 of and just yeah and I mean there is a way to do it right like Saints Row 4 did it right yep. I think yeah so it's not like like you cannot make an open world game without like like just, just like making your players frustrated at the I amount of grinding like Saints Row 4 is a bloated game like it absolutely is bloated but the, the reason it gets away with that is that it does not take itself seriously at all yeah uh, and and like at no point are you required to like just you know like upgrade yourself to x level or something like that yep if you play through the story you'll get 70 percent of the upgrades either way so all right so let's let's go through the nominees first and uh yeah yeah so, <laughs> far cry so rashi yeah you far cry 4 yeah you've already talked about it a lot but yeah if anything you want to add hmm so okay fine now the thing about far cry 4 is it's it's just too huge and there's just too, ma- too much hunting to do because you know you have to upgrade your weapon uh, you know your weapon bags your ammo bags your syringe kit and god knows how many things and each up uh, you know each every time you have to hunt at least like you know four or five animals and it's it's a hell lot of stuff to do so yeah uh, the skills you know like uh, you get some experience points and stuff like that but it doesn't really matter because eventually you get all of them by the end of the game you get or you, you unlock all the skill points so it's I did not really find the point of you know like walking around and killing animals and just to you know upgrade my bags <laughs> okay that came out wrong <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. Oh, and, and I mean, the other irritating part was like, there are these propaganda posters that you have to tear off, and there are like 150 of them. That was like so oh, irritating. Oh, I hate those missions. Like, they'll just put like random people <laughs> over the yep. place and like, find them all. Yep. That is an Assassin's Creed staple that I just hate. Yeah. And, and 150 posters, are you like kidding me? And it's not just posters, then there are these, these masks of. Yao Long or something and you have to like find them all which they're, they're scattered all over the place in hidden locations so you have to specifically yeah. gl- go to a particular area walk or drive or whatever go there and then get chased around by rhinos or ha- honey badgers or eagles and then finally make it over there and then turns out you, and then you have to find that mask okay and the only way you can get to know the mask wherever it is hidden is either you can see it and sometimes they hide it quite well. So if you're mm-hmm. close to the mask, a music will play. And if you're <laughs> away from it, the music will get, you know, lesser and lesser and harder to hear. 
Yeah. I mean, so, since I haven't like played this, like when whenever you're saying the mask, I'm actually imagining the mask, like you know. So. Yeah, it's uh, it's basically the 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 mask uh, of Yalong is basically some serial killer oh. spirit which is in the mask, so you have to destroy oh those. Oh. You know, like I I did think in between that it would be cool if Far Cry like in Far Cry Four they try to do like a quest that is some kind of ghost mystery, but. now looking at this kind of mask nonsense i hope they don't try to do that because it'll end up being awful and cliche yep and uh, <laughs> that then you have to spin money wheels or something to get xp uh, the the first part is that the moment you step out of the safe area you'll get attacked by an eagle <laughs> <laughs> what is the game in eagles really i have no clue there it is because attack people a lot in uh, in nepal yeah Like so I have a theory that this is because they thought the game wouldn't appeal to American audience, so you get the eagle to attack you. The eagle. Uh, yeah. I'm I, like my mom is just coming back from Nepal today. I'm gonna call her now. She's like, "Did you get attacked by an eagle?" No, don't call her. She'll get distracted and will not be able to defend herself. Yes. From I said she's that is back. I said she's yeah. back from uh, Nepal, not in. Oh. Eagles oh. followed her all the way from Nepal. They just <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> she basically caught aggro all the way back to Gujarat. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, Shadow of Mordor is what Arvind, Tejas, and me have all agreed to give best UV song. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because uh, like for me at least the reason I gave it to aside from the obvious joke is that Shadow of Mordor feels like it actually understands this structure better than the people who made it. It's generally made an yeah. open world game that wasn't focused on mission based design, but mm-hmm. was focused on designing systemic things that would make running around in the world interesting. Yeah, uh, and all their quests are systemic quests, you know, and that's mm-hmm. what's fascinating about it. Like the quest in the midpoint of the game where you have to kill four orc chiefs. It's actually you have to choose four out of ten, I think. No, I think it's only four out of five. Like it's, it's not that much. Four out of five, but it's yeah. still that's still like. each of them is in relatively different places and you have to trek around to get them and it's yeah and uh, the the most entertaining part for me was that i could either just like engage in a very difficult kill the chief mission or i could just like get a captain to become his bodyguard then have an easier betrayal mission which was actually in a secluded kind of place and it actually felt like this captain betrayed the guy because before that the dialogue was something to the end of you called me because you said my life was in danger and then this captain was like yeah it is <laughs> like you know like so so i mean even though it was kind of like, but for system systemically like it got a laugh out of me and it was great because like this was the captain in in a very fortress and had very little weaknesses but here i could easily like you know like get a get a his only weakness which was animals yeah you said The only yeah. problem with Shadow of Mordor in this category is that it's not a Ubisoft game, but it does deserve best Ubisoft game. Yeah. Like it does. <laughs> Because yeah. it is the it it does what those games have been trying to do better than they have been trying to do it for a long, long time. Yeah. Like even even the best Ubisoft game that I played recently, which is Assassin's Creed Black Flag, is not as mm-hmm. good as Shadow of Mordor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so Shadow of Mordor wins. Yeah. <laughs> what is this game? What are we cutting from this list, though? Uh, Watch Dogs. All the other four are Ubisoft games, so I don't really mind. I mean, Watch like uh, Watch Dogs, it shouldn't be on a list of best anything. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, I'd probably say, uh, yeah, like cut Watch Dogs and uh, like Assassin's Creed Assassin's Unity. Unity. Yeah. Uh, all right. <laughs> so the okay, winner of this killing yeah. me Ubisoft is Shadow of Mordor. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, so let's move on to our next category, which is the Fokert Kamal of Mal Award for Best Free to Play. Uh, this category has a bunch of games that uh, there's Firefall, which I think had a relaunch this year. Then there yeah. was. Ah, uh, they came out of beta. Ah, uh, okay, okay. They launched this year. Oh wow! Yeah, they that. launched. Oh. Yeah, it's a full yes. launch. Tejas has been uh, playing a shitload of Firefall. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good kind of. Huh? Just, what's it about? About like it is. Uh, the gameplay is a, a third-person shooter. Uh, okay. It's the the basic premise is that uh, there's been some kind of 
catastrophic event that has merged some other dimension with uh, the ours. And so all these weird uh, monsters and shit have kind of streamed into uh, this, this world. And there's something called the melding that has covered most of the Earth, except bits and pieces. So the, you're basically this guy in like a, you know, uh, kind of what they call a battle frame, which is basically a semi-mech suit, a cybernetic suit. And you go around taking missions because you're part of a, a mercenary program that's been started as an uh, ex-military thing, you know. Uh, and that's it, you know, you go around, you take missions. But there's something about this game, honestly, that just makes the progression just really fun. Is it just so, PvP or is it PvE also? That's the interesting thing. So apparently when uh, they were building it, uh, the initial... Uh, Focus, like when they first announced it, they had talked a lot about PVE, but their studio head or CEO or uh, someone basically high ranking at the time, I, I forget the guy's position and name, uh, he wanted to shift focus to a PVP focused game. And at that time, uh, they were actually very similar to um, uh, or heading along the lines of like TF2 in terms of, you know, character classes and, you know, PVP zones and all. But uh, I think in beta, they realized that this was not a good direction for them. And so that guy quit, and some new dude uh, t took the reins. And since then, they've been focusing more on the uh, PVE aspect. Well, which it is. And right is now, it, it, I, I'm enjoying it. Like, they've got uh, a bunch of world events. Uh, I'd say a few of them are really good, like two, two of them, to be exact. The rest are just kind of eh which is the other two, uh, more or less. But uh, they've got, uh, like, the, the, the world events come up pretty often, so they're, you know, they're always there. Uh, so it's not like, you know, you... So you when you say two out of four, you're saying these are two types of world events that are fun. Okay. Yeah, so they, they don't have much right now. The game does feel very sparse. Like, But I, I kind of feel like it's because of this whole shift in, uh, Direction. you know... Yeah, and it seems like it happened twice, so, you know. Yeah. Um, so I'm just kind of hoping that it'll um, uh, it'll get better, I'm, I'm pretty sure. So at the moment, it's fun. It feels very, like, uh, like sparse in terms of, you know, polish, in terms of content. But I don't expect that to last, uh, at least for another year or so. So let's see. Cool. Okay. Okay. It is. It's uh, like I said. I'm enjoying it quite a bit. If any of you guys decide to play, let me know. We'll group up. Okay. Download it after I finish Wolf and Sea. Alrighty. Sounds fun. Yeah. Uh, the other games we have are Path of Exile, which like I've played a bit. I think Vivek has played a bit. Yes. I played. Okay. Uh, Tejas, do you have any thoughts on it? Uh, it is. A huge barrier for entry, huge barrier. Like it, it's easy to play and get into, but there's like you know the crafting, the yeah. uh, the skill trees. Like there's a shit ton in there that you know like just right off the bat you're just like what? Uh, and it's a little intimidating, I guess, it, uh, for uh, newer players. Uh, what would you think, uh, uh, Vivek? Uh, I'd say that like at the surface level. Three or four hours I played this game for. It is like it is like Diablo. It is like Torchlight 2. But the one thing I say is that it's not differentiating itself enough for me to get into it. It has the same loop thing that they have going. And like you said, there is the intimidating thing of the skill tree. system. But like I was hoping for something in that combat system that I found genuinely interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't I didn't find that in Path of Exile. Yeah, I mean, for me, like, I liked what I played here, but ultimately, like, for me, like, there was no point where I thought that, yeah, like, being online and, like, free-to-play really helps this game. So, so I mean, obviously, like, they have a very, like, because of their, like, cosmetic stuff and, like, you know, like, they have a steady income stream and everything. So, financially, it's worked out well for them. But I don't think there was any benefit for me, like, for this free-to-play, apart from the fact that I got this game for free. So... <laughs> So yeah, like for me, it's a it's a bit of a weird thing. Like this is a free to play game, which I think it would actually be better if it were offline and like not free to play. 
So mm, okay. So yeah, otherwise yeah, I agree with you guys. Like it's the same thing. Like the skill tree is pretty intimidating, and like I actually didn't have any idea of the crafting. Like I'm not a crafting kind of player in general. So oh, okay. So yeah, I never actually like did any crafting in this game. So so yeah, now uh, the other game here is Zombie Catchers, which I have never heard of. So anyone who uh, that's a mobile game. Uh, yeah. I played it a while back, and like you know, one of the few mobile games that I can get into. It is surprisingly good. Like it, it's uh, you know, yeah, you have to wait a bit and stuff, but it's not at you know, like horrible. And the actual gameplay is really fun, really precise. Something that you know, uh, someone who doesn't generally play uh, mobile games can actually appreciate and uh, get into. Uh, so what it is is basically it's a side scroller uh, it, during the actual gameplay mode. And in that mode, you're basically uh, have to uh, run around and catch these zombies. That's the kind of what it amounts to. Uh, and you have a harpoon, so you have you basically your uh, actions are shoot ju and jump, and then directional, you know, left and right. So there's like a lot of precision required because the zombies have certain movement types. You know, they're not just gonna run, and the terrain's a bit funky and little stuff. You know, just little things like that. So it gets really, uh, it get, it gets really good. Okay. So, so if you um, ever like if you have a mobile, it's worth trying out. I'd say. Okay. I'm actually, yeah, I'm actually looking for it right now. I probably like have a go. I'm, I'm, I think it. I'm, I may. I'm not sure, but I. It may actually just be an iOS exclusive. Oh damn it. Yeah. yeah but <laughs> check anyways. If it's not, that's yeah. awesome. Otherwise, it also has a very lenient, uh, like, uh, uh, progression in terms of having to pay for shit. You, okay. I like I I went up to the max level that these guys have actually put in mm. within a week, and that's me playing every now and then. You know, okay. I wasn't playing obsessively, so you never had to pay for a thing. Never even felt like I needed to. So probably not good for their monetization, but you know, as a game, it's good. Okay, uh, is it made by Appion? Because you know, you know the thing with the app stores. There's like 50 games named Zombie Catcher. Uh, no, no, this is made by two guys and a dog. Huh. That's actually no, what it's I, Yeah, uh, yeah, no, it's not there then. Yeah, it's, uh, okay. Yeah, it's by some guy called Appion, and it has like two stars, so I guess it's probably a clone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, mobilegaming.jpg aside. Uh, uh. Uh, okay, so the next game on this list is Card Hunter, which uh, Vivek and I have played. I don't know if like I I just I'm the one who told you about it. I maybe. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Oh. Oh, cool. So yeah, like I like the strategy aspect of it, and I like the meta story they had going on. Yeah, I like the meta yeah. story. The meta yeah. story was fun. Yeah. Yeah, for me, like yeah, I mean, I never felt the need to kind of like you know do, uh, buy the whatever they were selling. I don't yeah. even know what they were That's selling. That's what I love about it. That's yeah. what I love about it, right? I mean, it, it's uh, like the studio that's making Card Hunter is set up by an ex irrational guy. Hmm. Uh, no, sorry, ex looking glass guy. Not even oh. ex irrational. So it's like this guy is a veteran and they know what they're doing. And uh, it's a really, really smart guy uh, making something really, really cool. Yeah, I really like Card Hunter. Yeah, it, it it was it, it's it's nicely designed. You can really get into it. I think for me personally, like after a while, I did kind of uh, uh, get a little tired. But I think it may have some more to do with the fact that at the time I was in Gujarat and had like really shitty net speeds. So my you know my game would die <laughs> out in the middle, and so I'd have to restart from the beginning. Mm. Uh, but generally, like I, I I thought the mechanic was clever as well. Just the whole you know. Uh, Card setup and uh, uh, card like the, the deck building via uh, like equipment items. That, that, that was really smart. Yeah, I I like the the equipment stuff and the way you had your own squad, which you like slowly grow over time. Yeah, it it was yeah. fantastic. Yeah, it's a pretty great game. Uh, then the last game is uh, a game called Crossy Road, which I have uh, not which, played. 
Yeah, which I'm at, like it's it's like available on everything. So I'm actually playing it right now. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> uh, Rashi, you uh, what do you think of this game? I think it's a lot of fun, and you know the thing is, you know, it's basically starts with a chicken, and you have to make it cross the road, and. Yeah. I thought it would be pretty easy being an Indian, you know, because you have to <laughs> like watch out for <laughs> ev- anything and everything possible while crossing a road. Mm-hmm. And I thought, okay, yeah, I can do this, and this it's tough. <laughs> and the best part is like um, you you can unlock a lot of characters. Mm-hmm. So nothing really happens as such, but it's it's fun to play as you know da- da- the Dark Lord crossing <laughs> the road, and then he gets taken by an eagle or he falls into the water. Yeah, That's damn eagles. eagles. Yeah. yeah. Yes, again, eagles. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I'm, I'm just like sensing a, a trend here. Yeah, I know. Was there like some kind of game developer memo that we missed out on that just said, "Hey guys, eagles." eagles. Hate eagles. <laughs> yeah, like it was something else last year, which was there and everything. Like. Oh, last year, last year was the year of the bow. Oh yeah, the bow. Yeah, this time it was eagles. I guess. Oh my god, an eagle just killed me here. Like what the <laughs> hell? Like Exactly. <laughs> and I I uh, yeah, so it's it's a lot of fun because you don't have to necessarily like spend real money to unlock characters, but you, you know you can just make 100 coins and then use them to unlock character a particular character. So Yeah. I think I I think it's it's a lot of fun. It's pretty challenging, it's pretty frustrating and yeah. Yeah, it does definitely borrow a bit from like Flappy Bird. Yeah, in that case, huh? Yeah, I mean, like the pixel art is nice. Like I like the art. It has like, not pixel. I guess it's like voxely. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah. Like it, it's a fun game. Yeah. Uh, so, what are what are we gonna? Hmm. Hello. I would. Uh, not, I, I'm not so sure what to say. Like, uh, I think just, just, just to be a little bit different, I, I'll uh, give it to zombie catchers. I think we should have some mobile representation. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't have a particular dog in this race, so yeah, I'm fine with whatever you guys come up. Yep. I'm like I have played Card Hunter way back in the way back, way back thing. So. Yeah. I'm not particularly attached to anything here. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. Uh, zombie catchers wins <laughs> by one nil <laughs> in this category. Yeah. So. Uh, okay. So now our next award is the Naya Dor Award for the most novel experience. This was this game is basically something that surprised us. Uh, uh, in this year, something which is like unconventional in its gameplay and at the same time has. Uh, is enjoyable to play. So in this category we have Jazz Punk, Lifeless Planet, Divinity Dragon Commander, Dungeon of the Endless, and <laughs> One Finger Death Punch. Are we uh, are we cutting Divinity Dragon Commander and One Finger Death Punch from this? Uh, Divinity Dragon, okay, yeah, it came out last year, I think. So I'm fine with it. Uh, I'd probably cut the thing that won, like, but nothing else is won here. So, like, it has it. Like, I don't know. Uh, uh, Dungeon of the Endless is one best roguelike. Yeah. So. so it can win this. Yep. No, but like, like we are sort of like, you know, a very... One very, finger we are a very death fair punch state. is not winning yeah. in this for sure. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I don't mind that. Yeah, But I think it's a bit unique. Like it deserves to be in the top mm. three. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And like besides, like it has the rhythm game martial arts thing, which has not been. I have before. not played any of the so. games, so it's okay if you. I mean, I don't mind if you cut something. That's okay. Uh, okay, so Arvin, y- your your name is against Lifeless Planet, so choose Lifeless Planet or One Finger Death Punch. Uh, you, you you feel no, you feel strongly more. enough about Lifeless Planet, so. And you're the only one here advocating for One Finger Death Punch. Hmm. Hmm. Nah. Hmm. Both of them are unique in their own way, but like, hmm. Yeah. Okay. One finger death punch. Since it's since it's won before, so we'll just yeah. It. It hasn't won before, but. Okay. No, it was a moral victory. Like, that's <laughs> that's what matters. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 
Yeah. Okay, so Jazz Punk, Vivek, you like this one. Okay, Jazz Punk is a game in which you have to catch three pigeons using a pigeon catching device, then bake them into a pie and use pigeon pheromones to attract uh, female pigeons to come eat the pigeon pie which has male pigeons inside it. That is uh, why it wins my award for most novel experience. Drops uh, my okay. Yeah, that gag didn't kind of like, I mean, like for me, that, that gag was like roughly <laughs> kind of instead of like the outrageously it, funny. It, is, but... it was the most novel thing I've played all year. <laughs> there is nothing I've played that has even begun to resemble Jazz Punk. Hmm. Yeah, like, okay, yeah, I mean, jokes wise, like for me at least, like, some some of them fell flat, but yeah, okay. Like, yeah. Uh, then there is Lifeless Planet, which uh, which I am recommending. So Lifeless Planet is a game where you are an astronaut, and uh, uh, you basically uh, explore a planet and to find out what happened to the rest of your mission. And uh, like that's the first half of the game. The second half is basically you. Uh, uh, trying to find out what exactly like this planet has because then you find uh, like a, a, a Soviet base that like the Soviets landed on this planet before uh, and you try to find out what happened here exactly so okay. so like what I like about this game is that it evokes a sense of wonder like uh, it's it's not a procedural game or anything it's like you go through set pieces uh, okay. with a third person plat- it's a third person platform but like I like the way it conveys a sense of scale. Like there are levels in which which are huge. Like you feel like a like an ant on the surface of a planet, because uh, like there are there is varying gravity there. Uh, you are trying to navigate a huge cliff face. Uh, you know it it has that the same feeling which like Interstellar gives you when you're looking at the the black hole kind of thing. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. That's a pretty good pitch for most novel experience. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it 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 is a game which genuinely made me feel like a sense of but, wonder and like exploring an alien. A yes. pie. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, like that's kind of like. Uh, I, I mean, it's, it's like, a different thing. It's like a humor, like versus uh, you can't really yeah. compare no, it them. Versus, uh, did it ever force cannibalism on animals? I don't know. Like some animals do eat you, but uh, like, but that's a healthy diet. So. No. Cannibalism on animals hmm. means animals eating each other. I mean, come on. Uh, 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 then there is Dungeon of the Endless yeah, by Tejas. Yeah. Tejas and I have made already our case yeah. for why it's so awesome. <laughs> so, mm. yeah, my have, order in preference is like Lifeless Planet, then Jazz Punk, then Endless because I haven't played it. So, uh, okay. So, if we're going by, if we're going by like, I'm so we have like one and a half votes for Jazz Punk basically. Mm, yes. So in that case, Jazz Punk wins. Well, we have one and a half votes for Lifeless Planet as well. Mm, yeah. So it's uh, both of them are up against each other. Yeah, but then, okay. But, but then, then I mean, if I remove my it, one and, it, and a half vote, then did it really mm. make you feel like Interstellar, or are you, are you just saying that? No, I'm, I def, like I at that point I hadn't even watched Interstellar. This was way back in the year, like so. So it actually, like. A more accurate thing would be that Interstellar made me feel like Lifeless Planet. Okay. Because this was earlier in the year. So, like, you genuinely get a sense of wonder when you look at, like, this vast landscape like of this completely alien planet. And sometimes what it, what it does is, there's a giant crater. In the middle, there's there's just, like, a small cottage. Okay. And you go, to, go into that cottage and you find letters about a family that used to live there, like, who were, like, Soviet astronauts. And then you figure out, wait, why exactly did they start living here? What happened here? Hmm. And and that's not even that, like that's the starting part. Like after that, you slowly get into like Prometheus style architecture, you know, like, like alien architecture because like there there's a race of aliens. And then there's the ending, which is like the ending is actually like quite interstellary, like in a way, because oh. it has some really like speculative science kind of thing. Oh, so, cool. Yeah. Uh. Tejas, yeah. What do you want to win this category? Or like, are you behind Dungeons of the Endless, hundred percent? Uh, 
I would like to be, but you know what? Since you guys have a like a tie, I think I'm gonna hand it to uh, Lifeless Planet because uh, I I've been more intrigued by that even yeah. uh, before it came out. I'll find Lifeless Planet winning because Jaspunk has gimmicks, but this seems more interesting. Hmm. Okay. Okay, so Lifeless Planet gets the most novel experience award. Yay! And now there's the uh, the next category. I love that whenever something Arvin wants to win wins, he like he lets out a small yay. <laughs> okay, so the next award is uh, the Centerfresh Award for games we kept on chewing. I mean playing. Uh, and this is this category is is uh, what we found out was that actually like all of these games that we were playing were great games in in themselves, but we were just spending on the a lot of time on these other games which were you know like which we, we we didn't even think of nominating for the categories but turns out we have like 400 hours in them so so this is the, the category which like you know okay it's not like higher art or anything but you just can't stop playing it uh, and it, okay yeah and this category has hearthstone magic the gathering 2015 football manager league of legends and far cry 4 Okay, well, I I put Hearthstone in there and you can cut it because even though I played like maybe 50 hours of Hearthstone, it's not going to win this. It's fine. I probably okay. put a lot of hours into League of Legends and now most recently Firefall. So, uh, yeah, but probably sunk more in total in this year into League of Legends. Are we cutting Magic 2015, Arvind? Yeah, Magic and Football Manager both, uh, like I'll, I'll actually just compare which I have spent more time in and we'll cut the letter, the least one. Yeah, Football Manager like only 200 hours, uh, Magic 2015, 250. So, only, right. Yeah, so Football Manager unfortunately. <laughs> like this, this year I've actually like reduced, like I didn't play this year's Football Manager, that's why it's uh, there otherwise, yeah. So... Yeah, I mean, I'm fine with League of Legends. Like, I know a lot of people play it. So, yeah, League of Legends. Like, Rashi, Far Cry 4. Like, anything yeah. On. It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of fun, uh, uh, you know, roaming around, doing side quests. Side quests are pretty cool. Uh, like, there are, there are some side missions where you have to defuse a bomb without being detected. Mm-hmm. So if if those guys detect you, then they basically put a timer on the bomb and it's around like, what, 10 seconds, 15 seconds, and you have to defuse all three with everybody firing at you. So the best part is not to be detected. Then uh, there, are st- uh, there are stuff like where you have to rescue hostages or you deliver certain items or something you know so this this is a lot to play uh, which is not the main mission and then when you play it with a friend it's it's even more fun far cry 4 co-op mm. when it works is was pretty good mm. yeah mm. and i spent a lot of time playing all these side quests uh you have to make different strategies it it's not like one thing works all the time mm. so mm. okay yeah, no, that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, so what are we doing? Like, I can I can abstain if like there's a impasse on this one. So, so yeah, like because like like it's the nature of these games that we'll probably only play one out of five of these. Yeah. So, so yeah. I think if we want to consider global time sunk, League of Legends wins. Yeah, probably. Mm. Yeah. So League of Legends, yeah. Yeah, let's go with that. Yeah, Vivek isn't objecting to it either, so let's just <laughs> push on. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Please. so League of Legends one wins by the sheer amount of hours spent in it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then we have the Ati Sundar Award for Best Looking Game. Ooh. And this category is a pretty like huge category here. There's the Banner Saga, Transistor, Dungeon of the Endless, Wolf Among Us, and Vanishing of Ethan Carter. All of which, by the way, are really good looking games. Yeah, they're all yeah. Yep. looking. Yeah. They're all fantastic, really. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the Banner Saga has great Disney style 2D art. 
which which like really like is the top call notch like yeah. it's top notch it's amazing then, yeah then like it's probably only equaled by transistor which yeah, which like is. looks just like transistor actually like as a game developer like it makes me feel pity for myself i'm like what the hell like this isn't fair like how can somebody make a game that looks so, so good how can an indie team make a game that looks so yeah. good yeah there's just one or maybe two people working on it three mm-hmm. yeah no on the art uh yeah then one. i think there's only two there, there's on the just art. one yeah. i think yeah, gen z like gen she z, does yeah. most of this then i think some of the like miscellaneous then there's like bunch of other like freelancer stuff but yeah mostly but yeah like, transistor looks really good then dungeon of the endless has a very unique like pixel art style yeah which which i mean although like we've seen a lot of indie games do that it does it really well so uh then there is wolf among us which does a very good like noir like it it feels like the pages of a comic book mm, it's yeah. like telltale it's have their the own it's what the look it's what the look that they went for and it works very well for them yeah like telltale have their like own engine which always has these you know like hand drawn style characters but the wolf among us it really fits like it it suits the subject material the type of story being told hmm. and then vanishing of ethan carter i think this game actually pioneered like or at least like was the first notable instance of a new type of texturing technology thing where they photograph a a real world object at multiple angles and then like combine it to a texture yeah something like that but yeah it, yeah. it looks really good yeah so Okay, what yeah. are we cutting first? Like, I personally would just give it to all five. So yeah, like, yeah. but this this cut... one is very difficult. Hmm. I'd say looks like like a comic book, man. It looks like a comic book. Yeah. Uh, I'd say based on the like, for my reasoning would be that Wolf Among Us, like, it's not as good as maybe not as good as the other three, and like Telltale, yeah, like. like perhaps you can like sort of say that like it's just telltale uh, telltale's engine which is suited to this and i would say endless because the pixel art style has been done a bit before like fez for example yeah i so, i yeah. i would I'm give this to bagger saga just for that polish for oh my like god and for the animations beautiful man like for yeah. hand drawn animations like for scene and for like every action set like just, there's just too much that you cannot just be like oh yeah and man that intro that intro yeah the God. intro is really good yeah 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 i'm i'm fine with like the banner saga or transistor winning it yeah so i'm fine with that yeah we can because really it like uh, yeah like so i don't mind banner saga either because it it was what really caught my eye uh while transistor is very very beautiful uh, i don't know mm. i guess like, everyone be, is like, agreeing to banner saga so yeah like to be fair like to transist because obviously like it's a great game but like they had way more animations to draw to like they had the whole combat thing banner saga like perhaps a little bit less but then yeah, like but I mean, it's like, the focuses uh, yeah. of both games were different like i think banner saga has a focus on feeling atmospheric and then so the focus is is not necessarily on combat animation the focus yeah okay on- yeah Okay, like so Banner Saga then. I'm fine with yeah. that. What What are we cutting yeah. first? Probably like I'd say Endless and Wolf Endless, Among Us. Yeah. yeah. Among Us. Okay. <sighs> and uh, oh yeah, now okay, we come so, to the big one. Like. <laughs> so before we come to the the big one, where there's actually going to be a deep, we're going to go back to the WWF mode that we were in a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> we should just take categ- like take stock of every category and say which which has won uh okay. so first. so gal just start here with okay. the the kuch kuch hota hai award for best emotions went to transistor for the ending yes uh, i don't know what it is but it's probably good <laughs> can you tell you what it is no 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 you can don't. tell you what it is right now i'm going to play it soon yeah and then we'll discuss it. <laughs> then the chetan bhagat award for worst writing was very Uh, hotly contested but splinter cell exercised its first amendment it's fifth, fifth, freedom. fifth freedom oh yeah sorry fifth freedom yeah yeah so splinter cell 
won this patriotic award and then <laughs> the samosa me aloo for best gameplay award like to be fair all five of them had really great gameplay but metal yeah. gear rising won in what was probably like uh the what was ve- an argument that was worthy of crusader kings 2 let's just say wow okay. <laughs> yeah okay. and then uh the the award for worst accent went to far cry 4 uh because ultimately like they were just saying curse words and the rest of the dialogue was in english so yeah <laughs> and there were bad curse words i mean yeah <laughs> badly yeah. pronounced curse words yeah uh then the gazab kahani award for best story went to blackwell epiphany because it ended a series uh with like a lot of panache like banner saga could have won it but like since it was the beginning of the plot so you kind of like the beginning like a lot of these games have like had strong beginnings but yeah uh then we have the prem rog award for best roguelike which was won by dungeon of the endless yeah not really contest here uh then there was the tumse na ho payega award for biggest disappointment this was a this was a pretty huge category but i'm so, but watch dogs like competently the only competent thing it did uh, managed to win Smart. this award yeah <laughs> then the shakuni mama award for best strategy game goes to crusader kings 2 and i think like in the like if we want to give an award to future strategy games it's best to disqualify this from other awards like yeah. in the future because this is going to win every time i feel like yeah uh, well unless there's a crusader <laughs> kings 3 that comes out uh, yeah <laughs> uh, then the award for best ubisoft game was won by shadow of mordor because yeah thanks ubisoft <laughs> Uh, and the Fokat Kamal Award for Best Free to Play Game went to Zombie Catchers, uh, which I am told is a very good free to play game on iOS only. So, like, yeah, <laughs> uh, waiting for it to come on Android, like, and then, like, yeah, that's what everyone says always. You see, you have those Facebook pages where, like, the first comment on an iPhone game is like, "When is it coming on Android?" <laughs> this is what this was. <laughs> and then the naya dor award for most novel experience went to lifeless planet for evoking a sense of wonder and having uh, like all these crazy scenarios on a planet which like was frankly like a character in itself and, and then inspiring interstellar <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then the center fresh award for games we kept on playing went to league of legends for just the sheer time like that has been spent on it Uh, and the ati sundar award for best looking game went to the banner saga though i must say this was probably the closest yeah this seriously is, this is very close yeah all of the games on this uh, like transistor dungeon yeah. of the endless wolf among us vanishing of ethan carter all look are, good yeah pretty good so now let's uh go on to the super hit mukabla top 10 games of the year and this uh, this is a list which has been sort of collated by all of us yes based on the games we like so i what we can should we just uh, like start from the first game and like tell everyone what we lo- love about it and then move on to the well, next i mean all right let's read out the list first because we've talked about every game on this list already yeah okay, okay. so let's start with the So the list is uh, this is by the way not in any like order. Yeah, it's, it's not in any order yet. Yeah. So Shadow of Mordor, Metal Gear Rising: Revengeance, Dungeon of the Endless, Transistor, One Finger Death Punch, Banner Saga, Wolfenstein: The New Order, Door Kickers, Vanishing of Ethan Carter, and Blackwell Epiphany. That's a good list. Yeah, that's a good list. Yeah. Uh, that's a solid list. Yeah. So yeah. let's let's start putting games in order now, from one to ten. Okay. So let's start. Okay. Okay. So right now, if we look at it the way it is right now, this the is Shadow of Mordor was the most uh, popular game amongst all of us. Amongst like, all of us, uh, yes, it was. Yes. Yeah. But is it game of the year? Because we all had problems with its story. Yeah. Yeah, true. Okay. Yeah. Let me let me do let me do one thing. 
yeah honestly like yeah, like i don't uh, like uh, really care about the order so yeah like shadow like it can be shadow mode or can be any any place from 1 to 5 like or 10 yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Iska kutta bhok raha hai yaar. Uh that would be outside my house. Oh. I my windows and doors are closed. I there's not much I can do. Okay. All right guys. All right. So Does anyone have a problem with Dungeon of the Endless being game of the year? Nope. Maine khela nahi hai. I haven't played it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Tejas and I have no problem with it being game of the year. No problems whatsoever. I think is, is there anything else that you guys think should be game of the year? Rashi. Yes. Transistor. Okay. <laughs> Transistor. Mm-hmm. All right. We'll we'll come back to that later. Let's let's look at the bottom five. Is everyone okay. happy with that? Banner Saga, Wolfenstein, Door Kickers, Vanishing of Ethan Carter, and Blackwell Epiphany. Hmm. I think Blackwell Epiphany can probably be above Vanishing of Ethan Carter. Okay. Mm, and probably Wolfenstein the New Order like if you but yeah but yeah okay yeah like the order necessarily like I don't really care much because Wolfenstein but... is actually quite interesting the only thing is I haven't played it I mean finished it so mm. but matlab jitna abhi tak khela hai it's really interesting the story the narrative mm. and everything is pretty cool mm. so far and i was like talking to my friend abhi and he's like the game's just started and you go- it's going to blow your mind off so i don't know okay a lot of okay. people uh, have actually said it's a pretty good game they did not did not have any expectations from it and I'm fine with door kickers being there uh uh finishing a weekend carter i'm fine with that being at number 10 Yeah. Did I'm surprised you didn't add Vanishing of Ethan Carter for best story. You didn't think the story was that good? I haven't played it yet. I thought you were playing it. I didn't finish it, I mean. Oh, you haven't finished it. Okay. Mm. Okay. I would still like say Transistor story was much much better. Okay. All right. So the bottom five is Banner Saga, Blackwell Epiphany, Wolfenstein: The New Order, Door Kickers, Vanishing of Ethan Carter. Does anyone have a problem with this being our bottom five? Nah, not no. really. Okay. It's not really a bottom five. It's like yeah. <laughs> so now, now the reordering is going to happen in the top five. Okay. Dungeon of the Endless, which I think should be Game of the Year. Yeah. Metal Gear Rising: Revengeance at number two. Shadow of Mordor. Transistor, One Finger Death Punch. I think Transistor should move above Shadow Mordor. <laughs> it just, it's just this complete package. The artwork is amazing. The sound, I mean, the songs are really cool. I agree. It the has... the gameplay is awesome. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I don't mind it either. Yeah. And the ending. <laughs> And the ending. You know what happened in the end? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'm cool with this list. Is everyone yeah. happy with this order? Yep. Yeah. Rashi, do you want to flip? Yeah, I'm happy with this two? new order. Am I right? Hmm. Oh Actually, my it's just that I haven't <laughs> played Dungeon of the Endless, so I really can't say. And I, I have played Metal Gear Rising and Transistor and Shadow Mordor, so. I don't, I just don't know where I should place dra- dungeon. Like I mean I played transistor I played dungeon the endless the only contention I have is that transistor like did not uh, so, like I, there wasn't a big surprise it's just amazingly well polished and a lot of fun to play. Mm true that. Uh dungeon of the endless is polished fun to play but it's also fresh. Hmm. That's what I love about it. Uh so yeah I that's why I think it should be game of the year. I made a long case for it already. Mm. Tejas, yeah. Are you okay with this list? Yeah, I like the list a lot. <laughs> Dungeons of the Endless is on top. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm taking care of basically. <laughs> Arvind, 
Yeah, I'm fine with it. Yeah, like I don't really mind the order much uh-huh. as long as okay. like the game. You want Blackwell and Pippin to move any further up? Nah, I think it's fine. Like, yeah, okay. because like I like because I know that like nobody else here has played it. That's why, yeah. Like if you're going for a consensus consensus thing, that like yeah. All right. All right. So, in year of awesomeness. So number ten is banishing of Ethan Carter. Number nine is door kickers. Number eight is Wolfenstein: The New Order. Uh, number seven is Black Phillip Epiphany. Number six is The Banner Saga. Number five is One Finger Death Punch. Number four is Shadow of Mordor. Number three is Transistor. Two is Metal Gear Rising: Revengeance. And number one is Dungeon of the Endless. Yay! And that is our game of the year. Woohoo! The Dead Horse Podcast game of the year, 2014. <laughs> We're all really tired now. Just yeah. So you, yeah. For for anyone who's listening to this at any other time of. We started four day. hours. Ago. Yeah, we've had <laughs> this for a while, and this podcast has lasted what two hours? More than that, two and a half. Three and a half. Three and a half. Great, because this why? Has lasted two and a half hours. We were we were preparing for an hour before we started. <laughs> that is it from the Dead Horse Podcast for 2014. We will see you in 2015. All three of you who listen to us, uh, because no one is going to listen to this, but we had a lot of fun doing. I had a lot of fun doing. This. I don't know about the yep. rest of you. Yep. Yeah. And those three yeah, guys, fun. you yeah. know, keep it lively. So, Stay from us in India to you wherever you are, probably in India. Uh, Merry Christmas and yeah, happy. then you won't get. Otherwise, you won't get the names. Like so. yes, you won't get the names. Uh, hopefully, you're in India. Otherwise, you won't get the names. Otherwise, Google the names and you'll get most of them. Anyway, <laughs> Merry Christmas, can happy get, year. From can we get some uh, uh, like shameless uh, self promotion? Like you know, please like and subscribe or something like that. Is yes, yeah. that that and please buy Arvind's game Unrest. Yeah. Now that you mention it, that game did win two Game of the Year awards. <laughs> <laughs> Please buy my game, which will come out sometime next year. Uh, so pre-plugging before it's not even pre-ordering. I'm pre-plugging a game which I hope you'll buy next year. Anyway, uh, so from Tejas, Arvind, hey. Rashi, and me, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Bye, guys. Bye. Good night. Good night.